today's show. Can the Lakers rally to make the playoffs? Will a legit Warriors challenger emerge? And how does the AD saga end? In Crossfire, we debate All-Star Weekend's best dunk, the most memorable moment from Charlotte, and our favorite run-in. And we ask some NBA stars what they're the greatest of all time at. It's Wednesday, February 20th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters presented by Jack Daniels, old number seven in Tennessee, honey. I'm J.E. Skeets, alongside me as always, Tass Mellis, and as you can see over there, that's the Aussie. That's Lee Ellis finally paying off his January pick'em loss. Yeah, I had to wait for my hair to grow. Yes, that's right. <laughs> What's happening tonight for this payoff is Lee is going to get an intricate design oh, nice. in the back of his head. Now, the catch is Lee has no idea what it is, mm. and we're not going to reveal it until the end of the show. But you're in good hands, Lee, Yeah. with Kadir here from the Quad Barber Lounge. Yeah. Kadir? Give me some of that, Kadir. Appreciate yeah, you man. coming in. I got you. Have yeah, you man. ever, uh, don't, without giving it away, have you ever done a design like this in the back? I have of done a design. Oh. This, this is my first Australian customer. Okay, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> excellent. Well, I can't wait to see what we end up with. All right, so, so again, we'll show you at the end of the show, but Lee getting his haircut throughout this entire program Give tonight. Beard, Over yonder, we got the bearded one. Yeah, might get that trimmed up while he's here. It's Trey Kirby. Hey-o! hey yo! All right, TK, what's poppin'? Well, man? I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, today is Charles Barkley's birthday. And that's why this clip of him from his time with the 76ers showed up on Reddit today, as you can see, showing his then teammate Manute Bowl some various dinner bowls. First one, not to Manute's liking. Second one, also not to his liking. And his third, whoa! That is Rick Mahorn under the table. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to be Mahorned that hard, but this is a classic prank, which brings us to today's question. What is the best NBA prank? For instance, how about the time the Sacramento Kings took popcorning to the next level? Everybody popcorns cars, but the Marcus Cousins and Rudy Gay popcorned Nick Stauskas' entire house oh. because he didn't have a car. That place must have smelled like butter for a month. Maybe even after he sold it, yikes. Would not want to clean that up, but we want to hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, what is the best NBA prank? Send us your best tweets, fashion. The starters, we'll hear from you later. All right, get your tweets in. On tonight's show, Tass and I are going to step into the crossfire and it will be hosted by a man in a barber chair. Yes, Lee Ellis <laughs> is the ref tonight. We're also going to discuss a few of our favorite uh, all-Star Weekend moments and takeaways as we look back at a fun All-Star Weekend. But first, we've hit the home stretch here, sort of, with the NBA regular season. So let's look ahead at some post-All-Star big questions. TK, take it away. All right, LeBron James has made eight straight trips to the finals and 13 consecutive playoff appearances. But as it stands now, the Lakers are in 10th place in the Western Conference, three games behind the Clippers. LA has 25 games left to make their postseason push. So guys, tell me, will the Lakers Make the playoffs. Well, I'm going to say yes. I, I got to bet on the Lakers. I got to bet on LeBron James. It's going to be real tough. Three games back. They've got the Kings in between them and the Clippers. But I'm betting on LeBron to have a good 25 games to end the season. I, I like that they have this window here. LeBron James, obviously one of the greatest of all time. He can pull this off. You think he, so? he can do it. They've got to win 16 games to get to 44, which is a tough that task. Might, that might not be enough. It's, you might, it's you possible. Might, I, see, I got them winning. I think they have to win like 16 or 17, so a couple more than what you're saying, to have enough to ultimately get in over a Clippers or Kings team in the mix. So they have to have a great record here near the, down the stretch. And their schedule is not easy whatsoever. Uh, and the Clippers, who are sitting in eighth, have a far easier schedule. Yeah. Uh, it's good that the Kings don't. Um, but, yeah, I think as this board is titled, can they lock in? Yes, it's LeBron James, and this team was very, very good before he went down with his first injury. They were fourth in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. It's kind of easy to forget that because of the whole Anthony Davis drama and that they haven't been great since LeBron came back. But if you're going to bet on one guy to make the postseason for his 14th straight season, it's got to be that guy. I, I just don't think he goes to L.A. and misses the playoffs. You're basically saying that a guy in LeBron James, the best player in the game today, I think we can all say that, isn't going to win 
17 of his last 25 games. I, I'm not, I mean, look, I'm not the, betting on that. The schedule, you said it, the fourth toughest schedule left in the league the Lakers have, so it's not going to be easy. And even ones where you look at and you go, well, that'll be a gimme, that'll be a gimme. We've seen the Lakers, even with LeBron in the, in the lineup, lose to teams like the Knicks and the Cavs and just most recently the Hawks. So even those are not gimmies. I think what's crazy here is, you know, it's 25 games, you said. You know, LeBron over the last eight postseasons – has played on average 21 games. So really, the playoffs in a way, are, they're starting right now for LeBron and the Lakers here. These are, every game is very, very important. They can't go on a three or four game losing streak. That might be it if that happens. Now they're helped out by the Clippers having traded Tobias Harris and a team that is not incentivized to, you know, to even get into the playoffs. They wanna, they wanna land in the lottery because they're gonna keep their pick and that won't go to the Celtics. So that helps, but the Kings, man, the Kings were making moves at the deadline. They got Harrison Barnes. They're going for this because they haven't been there forever. But they don't have LeBron James. They don't. They don't. <laughs> when his back's Harrison against Barnes the wall. is good, but he's not LeBron James. When his back's against the wall, he can win any basketball game that he wants to. And, and I just don't see him taking that trip to L.A. and missing the playoffs. Lee, quickly, what do you think? Uh, yes, but it's going to be a close shave. They can't afford to have LeBron <laughs> uh, miss any more games. Yep. I mean, he, he suffered one of the most significant injuries of, career, of his career this season. It really knocked him out. If yeah. he goes down for another five, eight games... You can games, open are your you eyes. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Very, it's very relaxing. Okay. Yeah, he's doing a wonderful job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep it up, my man. I, I, love, I like what you're doing with the beard, actually. Uh, it's uh, really nice, yeah. I think an extra yeah. little motivator is making everybody forget about this whole clutch sports Anthony Davis thing. Yeah. Just shut everybody up and, and go make the playoffs. All right, Trey, next one. Well, we know Lee is rooting for the Clippers. That being said, they've had some <laughs> drama and they have had some injuries. But even after all that, the Golden State Warriors still have the best record in the Western Conference. And they're just two games back of the Bucks for best record in the entire league. So, guys, tell me, who can actually push the two-time defending champs? Which team is the Warriors' biggest challenger? Wow. Who? So, is it a team in the West? Is it one of the teams that will ultimately meet them in the finals? Yeah. Who is it? I'm going to dream and, and stay in the West for yeah. a second. The Eastern Conference, there's going to be a battle in the NBA Finals. But the Golden State Warriors, right now it seems like they have a, a real easy road to get to the Finals. But I think the Thunder are being a, a little overlooked because they've got Paul George being like a superstar, playing like a superstar, and that's going to stay. And Russell Westbrook, he hasn't quite played like a superstar shooting the ball. They can get better if Russell Westbrook sort of finds his shot a little bit. Uh, they've got a tough schedule to the end of the season, which I think is a good thing for them. They're playing a majority of winning teams to end the season. You say that's so, a good thing because you think they come in a little more locked in. On yeah, teams. you're already well. No, because if you're going into the playoffs already having played a lot of playoff games and a lot of winning teams, that's a good thing. Sure. I, I think they'll be sort of locked in. And you get a guy like Markeith Morris, who they're reported to pick up off the waiver wire from the Washington Wizards to get that little edge that they need. I believe. I, I believe in that team to give them a fight because right now. Although the Rockets need to get healthy and they're getting healthier, they should get Clint Capella back in the West. It's hard to bet on them against the Golden State Warriors. Lee, who do you got? Is it a Rockets team? Is it the Thunder? Is it the Nuggets? So obviously, number well, one. the Nuggets, we haven't seen them really make the playoffs in this team. So I don't really think they can come in and knock off the Warriors. Every other team you mentioned there, Houston, <laughs> Oklahoma City... What? I just don't understand your why you're closing. Your eyes. Looks like you're <laughs> trying to figure out the future. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, uh, I man. see the Clippers. I need, someone, I, need, I need someone to come in and do my hands as well. My feet. Right. Right. I do the full service. But uh, every other team needs everything to go perfectly well for them. Uh, and to do that four times out of seven games is just very, very hard to see. I mean, the Warriors have only got themselves really in front of them right now. Yeah. And even if they lose one of their players to, for an injury for a couple of games, it doesn't really matter. So. Tough to see anyone knocking them off four times in seven games. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> especially with your eyes closed. Lee, oh, no, no, no. Lee has seen the future. Very Lee. tough to see with your I eyes closed. The weirdest part yeah. of this right, would be right. him getting a haircut. Oh, it's man. just him closing his eyes and talking to us. <laughs> all right, Trey, our final one. All right, the trade deadline was nearly two weeks ago, but we're still talking Davis drama because the last time we saw Anthony Davis with the Pelicans, he hurt his shoulder and left early. Then over All Star Weekend. Davis came on NBA TV and he gave an updated trade destination list. Take a listen to his expanded list. All 29 other teams are on my Everyone's list. Everyone's on the like, list. I don't have a preferred destination. Um, like I said, I, I, I just want to win. You know, they actually big market, small market. I, I don't care. It's been a month long ordeal thus far, so how will the Anthony Davis saga end? Will it ever end? I, yeah, will this ever end? I mean, it ultimately ends in 2021 with him on the Lakers, doesn't it? Whether he goes there in free agency or is traded to them, I think that's the ultimate. Where you think it's he's going to go. get traded 
automatically, imminently to the Lakers this offseason? No, 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 no. I'm saying 2021, it ends with him on the Lakers. Even oh, if he's true. traded to some other team, he's going to be going. He said there are the 29 Lakers. teams. I don't buy it for a second. So I didn't buy that for an absolute second. About, yeah, that's about the worry with this. Now. What's interesting here is, I mean, we've already talked about it a whole lot. Is is he going to play again for the Pelicans? Were you shocked that he even played in the All Star game? In all honesty, after having a little surprising, but I was, injuries? but I was shocked that he played for the New Orleans Pelicans game before, before that. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was quite odd. So to see him in the All Star game, no, not so much. I think he's going to play a lot of the games for the Pelicans the rest of the season. Maybe sit out some parts of back to backs, and then when the Pelicans are out of the postseason race with eight. Nine, ten games to go. Then you can just sit him down, and you kind of have an excuse for that. And then the trade offers come in the off season. That's Lee, how it looks. Lee, you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, if he's not going to try his best, like we saw in a couple of those games there, then he may as well not play. But I mean, if he's healthy and they want him to play, and you know, do it for another five or ten games, and then sit him down when the season's mathematically over, I guess. Oh wow. Okay, we're going to see know. a couple more Anthony Davis games, just going through the motions, and hopefully he doesn't get. Seriously injured. Yeah, maybe he'll just like have another shoulder injury and they'll say, oh wow, that might be severe even if it's not. And they say, all right, just go to the Bahamas or something. Get away from the team. What a weird situation. When we come back, this show gets even weirder. Tass and I step into the crossfire to debate the best dunk from All-Star Weekend with Lee in a barber chair. <laughs> The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Here's how it works. <laughs> I will give these two guys, yeah, and there. Uh, oh, you break your neck or what? <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of it all, me and Kadir will. <laughs> you can't see back. That's going to be good. <laughs> me and Kadir will declare the winner. Okay. okay. <laughs> won. This is from the All Star Weekend, All Star 2019. It's in the books. And as always, the dunk contest on Saturday night was a big talking point. We saw some young stars on the big stage throw down some big dunks. But which player had the best dunk? Here we go. There were only two real memorable dunks from the 2019 dunk contest. The one was John Collins clipping the wing off a model airplane. Didn't mm. go that well. But the other one was Diallo jumping over Shaq. Jumping over a seven-foot guy, barely, barely, barely pushing off, honey dipping in the rim, showing the Superman on his chest. We will remember this dunk. He was the rightful winner. And that, to me, makes it the best dunk from All-Star Weekend. Well, it was ruined for me by Luke Bonner. Yes, Luke Bonner, not Matt Bonner, showing me that dunk before it happened about 10 times over. So <laughs> the memorable dunk to me was Miles Bridges going off the side of the backboard. I beg to differ that people aren't going to remember this. The throwback with Larry Johnson was a spectacular 360 off the board. And it's too bad he didn't hit the Jason Richardson on his first dunk off the glass between the legs. I think he was the best dunker in the contest. It just didn't happen. Only two dunks for him. Mm, good, good, good answers there. Good dunks. But trim up your answers for this one, please. There were some good dunks. But let's take a look at the entire weekend. Which moment of the entire three days in Charlotte was your favorite? Here we go. Undoubtedly, it's Curry, Yanis, Aliou. This is the moment that you're going to remember from All-Star Weekend. That's fair. We've never seen this before. This was an all-timer. We've seen some good alley-oops. T-Mac off the board to himself, Shaq and Mark. But this was ridiculous, and everybody on the bench knew it as it happened that was amazing that was wild my favorite though all-star moment is watching the three-point contest at the starters watch oh, party yeah, with 300 man. of our fans and the reason it was my favorite is people were into this thing we were going nuts with every three ball made because we had some unbelievable performances joe harris doing great in the first and the final round winning the thing curry amazing in both buddy healed showed up we had two guys in danny green and devin booker go for 23 points in the first round they didn't even sniff the final. That's how good this three-point contest was, and people were into it. That's my favorite moment. Oh, yeah, bro, give me some free yeah, time man, love. Yeah, right, man, all right. You gotta hold still, man. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting excited. A <laughs> uh, big part of All-Star Weekend is the people you meet. It might be someone you've only known online or a person you've admired for a while. So who was the most memorable encounter you had? Here we go. We met a lot of people, but during Sunday's All-Star Game, we got another chance to run into Commissioner Adam Silver. And you know if we run into Silver, we're taking a picture. We're doing our own silver bomb. So we took the picture with him. We ran into some crazy people, though. Shiggy, Daryl Morey, Dikembe Mutombo, Guy Fieri went on and on and on. That was maybe the funnest part from All-Star Weekend, that Sunday game, running into people. Adam Silver was great, but I'm going to assume he's a fan of ours. To me, hanging out with all of our fans at our live party at the Unknown Brewery was the best moment. 
Well, we know they're fans of ours. They came to our watch party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's a hundred percent. But you're saying why wasn't Silver there? Good point. <laughs> right. This was a fantastic moment. It, it, I had such a good time that I thought the dunk contest was amazing because it was such a good time with those fans. Oh, and then you watch it again. You're like, mm, I gotta no. pick a winner. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, do it, man. Number two. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, thanks, Kadir. Sweet. Going back to back. Back to back. Number two going back to back. No, I like it. Oh, we come back. <laughs> the haircut continues. And we'll play a little fill in the blank. We'll show you some fun from Media Day. Don't go anywhere. Back with the starters, time for some fill in the blank fun. All star edition, I guess. Hamadou flew, KD was MVP, and I'm still getting my voice back. Guys, fill in the blank. The biggest takeaway from All Star Weekend was blank. Uh, the biggest takeaway is that missed dunks are terrible. Basically, <laughs> what it comes down to is that missed dunks and the slam dunk contest make or break Saturday night. You know, the three point contest is all reliable, it's yep. gonna be there, it's never gonna take over All Star Weekend. It's never gonna be terrible at all. It's just gonna be solid. But if guys don't throw down dunks, it kind of kills Saturday night. And if they hit their first or second dunk, then you remember it. it they, really, it just it makes or breaks Saturday night. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, no, you're right. I, my, I'm sticking with Saturday night. My, I guess my biggest takeaway is uh, I believe the skills challenge maybe is dead. And what I mean by that is the, the NBA did a good job of sort of saving this over the last couple of years, going to the bigs and smalls format. And we had a funny ending with Tatum hitting it from deep, I get that, but I think it's done. It's just, people are not into it, doesn't really set the tone all that much. I think we should go to some sort of one-on-one, -on -one, king of the court style thing. We get eight guys, even if they're not truly all-stars, but you get like Dion Waiters out there, Lou Williams, do some sort of thing, one-on-one -on -one thing where you get scored on, you're off, you can accumulate points or whatever, something else. Skills challenge was fine there, the bigs and smalls was fine, but now we don't even have bigs and smalls anymore in this yeah. league. I, I think it's over. What do you got, Lee? Uh, one addition I liked was the Legends three-point shootout that they had. Uh, Skeets, you know how you're always talking about trying to get in the celebrity game? Yep. Well, I think I could get in the uh, Legends three-point <laughs> shootout. You know what? You probably could. Because they really struggled. Um, Glenn Rice, Ray Allen, uh, Del Curry was there, and Mark Price. And uh, you know what? I mean, I didn't get my record of 20, but I did all right on my money ball, right? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think I could get in the competition for that alone, you know? Stick me in that corner and it's all raising money for charity. I think it's a good cause. Why not? You okay. shot well, but those guys didn't get 10 takes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh shots fired! I've never hit shots a three-pointer before. Shots <laughs> fired! Have you ever hit a basket? Oh, oh man! Oh, oh, man. oh, oh baby! Oh, oh, can't wait to see your ugly haircut. Can't oh, yeah. spicy. All right, well... Can't wait to see you on the basketball court. One more takeaway. One more takeaway from all Star Weekend, and that is uh, Media Day. It's still a bit of a gong show, but that wasn't going to stop us from going to it and asking the guys a few fun questions. Let's have a look. D Wade, Michael Jordan's birthday this weekend. Besides basketball, what's something you're the goat at? I have no idea. I gotta ask my kids if I'm a goat at being a father. I think I'm a goat at rock, paper, scissors. One, two, three, shoot. I have to say, ping pong. I can sketch. Yeah. So I would say I'm probably the best sketch drawer in here. I'm on my way to being a wine uh, sommelier. I'm guessing I'm, I'm on my way to be a goat. I'm not great at anything, but I'm really good at everything. If that make any sense. I Google a lot. Just researching my bottles, taking trips to Napa, taking trips to the, the fine wine stores in LA. People always talk to me about being a goat at Twitter. I'm a cab guy. I like Napa wines, I like Bordeaux. I don't like Merlot. He knows are cool. I'm the goat of uh, acting like I care. Bowling, I love it, bowling. You got your own balls? I haven't made it that far yet. <laughs> I got a long way to go. Fishing, I'm a winner. <laughs> At fishing, I'm a winner. How much your high score? Like 210. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. Probably video games. I was going to say, you got a particular video game where you think you're the best at? I think I'm pretty good at all of them. I am the GOAT at... Man. I'm pretty good at sarcasm. I like sarcasm, you know. My wife might say that I'm the greatest of all time at forgetting things that she tells me to do. God, I don't know what I'm the GOAT at. I gotta think about that. Uh, probably just living my best life. <laughs> Clay always with the best answer. All right. When we come back, we will reveal the back of Lee's head. Back.
And uh, yes, Man. January's pick and payoff look finally comes to a close. <laughs> I'm tired of looking at the front of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Want to be an NBA GM? Tune in to GM School and see if four stat savvy fans can convince these NBA experts that they deserve a job in the league. When you get your butt kicked, how are you going to respond to that? You absolutely can't do that as a GM. We actually have a little surprise for you. I feel like it's so much rotten on it. I can't believe how badly that went. No pressure. I've messed up big time. This is GM School, powered by SAP. Catch GM School tonight on NBA TV at 8 p.m. Eastern. All right, Joel Embiid's all-star break. Just got a little bit longer, actually. The Philadelphia 76ers announced today that the big man will be out for a week, at least, due to left knee soreness, though an MRI revealed no structural damage. His treatment will include physical therapy and load management. Yes, we get to say load management once again. All right, we asked you what's the best NBA prank. You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Right. Yeah, some good responses. Alex says the best NBA prank is when Manu slid a cup underneath Tim Duncan. This is a classic clip. Love everybody's reaction. Sam says the best NBA prank is MJ pantsing Penny. This was our number 10 Michael Jordan all-star moment, but my favorite answer comes from James, who says the time Shaq came into the studio without his pants. I don't know who the prank is on on that one. That was quite the moment. It's up in the air. We had wedgie number 27 last week. We didn't have a chance to show it to you, but now we do. Dallas and the Heat, it's Rodney Magruder. Nice. Burying a nice deep, nice. deep wedgie. Thank you, Rodney. All right, so what, what are we up to here? The old 2-7. All right, we got a while to go until <laughs> we get to 50, but we'll get there. We're you trying. Gotta, you got to believe. All right, so Lee was paying off his January pick'em loss. He was getting an intricate design in the back of his head. I have a feeling this might be the best NBA prank. Kadir, uh, <laughs> Kadir helping us out. Now, Lee has no idea what we've actually tried to put into the back of his head, so uh, I, mean, I don't know if there's a drum roll of some sort. There is. Okay, here we go. Let's spin them around whenever you want, Kadir. I just want to let you know, this side is me and that's them. That's okay, all I'm saying. Okay, okay, that's enough. all I'm saying. Let's see it. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> it's uncanny. <laughs> Lee, stand still for a second. Oh, can you okay. put it up here so I can see it? So, so, no, turn, we can turn Lee around. Turn Lee around. Turn Lee around. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, man. Man. I'm sorry man. Let's spin Lee around so we can show him. Spin him around. Spin him around. Yeah, Kadir. Uh, there we go. Watch out. Hey, oh, we'll hey. show you on a monitor. Hey, oh, okay. So we put in the, well, we tried to put in the drawing that Brendan and uh, Lindell that sent was in. so bad. <laughs> I think it looks perfect. That looks perfect. Uh, listen, Kadir, I have to say, man, I've always told people I've had eyes in the back of my head. And now I've <laughs> <laughs> two, two thumbs up. Kadir, man, so thank good. you so much so for helping hey, us guys out. Are welcome, man. I had a good time. Oh, uh, it was great. Yeah, the front yeah, looks man. good. Yeah. The beard looks yeah. sharp. The back <laughs> looks even better in my opinion. Well, oh, I didn't my know that the beard was going to be thrown in as well. Yeah, that's right. really nice. Style it on him. Yeah, man. Are you going to shave it we'll out or are you going to keep tomorrow. it? I got to keep it, man. Yeah. It'll scare the crap out of my kids at night. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs>